My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this life of ours is full of trials. There is no stage of our lives except that we face in it anxieties, grief, stress, and worries. If you look at the life of our Prophet wasallam, he faced far more powerful struggles than we did. His anxieties were far greater than anything we can imagine. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed at the very first major crisis of his life, of his spiritual life, Allah revealed a surah that will be the subject of our khutbah today because it deals with how to grapple with anxiety and stress. It deals with what to do when you're facing challenges. It deals with what to do when you're so overcome, you might be verging on depression. There was a time frame, some scholars said up to six months that Allah did not reveal any Quran. And the Prophet ﷺ began wondering, what's wrong? Is there something wrong with me? Maybe Allah doesn't love me anymore. These feelings that we now call anxiety, borderline depression, these feelings of doubting your self-worth, they came to none other than the greatest human being ever to walk the face of this earth. Then, at the very end of this time frame, Abu Lahab's wife taunted him and said, what's this? We haven't seen any Quran for so long. Maybe your shaitan has abandoned you. Audhu billah, audhu billah. And this really hurt him. And he went home very depressed, anxious. And it was at that point in time that Allah revealed the surah that we all know, this beautiful surah, my dear brothers and sisters. It is one of the most powerful surahs in the Quran to battle issues of depression. What does the dawn civilize? The beginning of a new era. It is a new day. It is new opportunity. It is new hope. Yesterday is gone. Today is a new day. This is how Allah begins the surah. Don't look at the past. Look at the future. Don't worry about what happened. Today is a new day with new opportunities. And the night when it becomes calm, which is the time of sleep, which is the time of sukoon. When you go to sleep as well, the worries of this dunya go away. When you wake up and the sun is coming up, no matter how bad was yesterday, today is a new day. This is a negation. Stop feeling that you are worthless. Stop feeling that you're worth nothing. Your Lord does not hate you, O Muslim. Your Lord does not despise you, O believer in Allah. Your Lord has not abandoned you, O you who says, La ilaha illallah. Your Lord will never abandon you. Did He not create you? Did He not guide you? Did He not give you all that you have? Stop feeling this sense of worthlessness. Now this verse comes and after getting rid of the negativity, it's substituted with positivity. Get rid of the negative feeling and think positive. The future will be better than the past. Life is tough. Wallahi, sometimes it is tough. Maybe, maybe, whatever issue we're having, we're not going to solve it in this dunya. But in the end of the day, this world is not the end world. Look forward to the akhirah, the eternal world. Don't concentrate on this dunya. Allah will give you and give you and give you until you will be content. So these three verses we said, they negate spiritual feelings of emptiness and negativity. Spiritually, people feel, I'm not worthwhile. Allah doesn't love me. I'm not good enough. These three verses negates them. You are worthwhile. Allah does love you. The next three verses, they negate feelings of worthlessness in this dunya. People think, oh, I've always been unlucky. Man, every time I take an exam, I fail. Every time I try to do a business, it goes bankrupt. Oh, I just have no luck in this life. What's wrong? Maybe Allah doesn't like me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam fa'awa. Fahada. Fa Three rhetorical questions. So the rhetorical question, it jars you. It makes you alert. So Allah asks three rhetorical questions. Meaning, Ya Rasulullah, how could you think that Allah has abandoned you? How could you think that you are no one, you have no worth? Look at all the blessings Allah has given you. Then Allah mentions three blessings. Alam yajidka yatiman fa'awa. Your mother died, your father died, your grandfather died. You were a yatim in every sense of the word. Yet, at every stage of your life, didn't 
we take care of you? Didn't we send someone else to protect you? You didn't know the truth, Ya Rasulullah. You used to go to Ghari Hira. You used to be praying to Allah to guide you. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided you. And we found you, you didn't have any money, Ya Rasulullah. You were poor. Your parents did not leave you a fortune. But now we gifted you. Our scholars say, Aghna here is Khadija and the wealth of Khadija. What is the purpose of these three verses, dear brothers and sisters? Anytime something negative faces you, anytime your business fails, anytime shaitan comes and throws a thought in your head, oh my God, I have no luck. Realize there are always positives in your life that you're overlooking at that stage. Shaitan has caused you to neglect some of the biggest blessings that Allah has given you. And you concentrate on the negative rather than the positive. So we learn from this, when feelings of worthlessness come, when feelings of despair come, don't look at the negatives, don't look at the failures, remind yourselves of the positives. Okay, this didn't work out, but Allah bless me with that. Always concentrate on the blessings and examine them rather than what you don't have. See, this society that we live in, this modern culture, it emphasizes what we don't have. Look at this multi-million dollar mansion. Look at this beautiful cars. Look at this. And we want to just aspire. We want that. We want that. We want that. Our Sharia says, stop looking at what you don't have and look at what you do have so that you appreciate the positive that you have. Every one of us is blessed and fortunate in our own ways. It's just that we neglect and ignore our blessings and we concentrate on what we don't have. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Once you have a different frame of mind, don't just sit there and do nothing. Go and be proactive. Do something positive. Contribute to society. Don't just sit there and mill around and say, Oh my God, life is tough. Okay, it might be tough. Maybe it is difficult. Okay, be optimistic. Change your paradigm. Change your frame of mind. And then go find a higher cause and go dedicate yourself to that cause. Do something useful with your life. Do something that will bring meaning and value to you and to others around you. Contribute positively in a way that will make you internally happy and externally bring about the rewards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because every one of us, without exception, can bring happiness to other people in some fashion or form. You have a hard heart. Your life lacks meaning. You're getting lazy spiritually. You don't have a higher purpose. Go find an orphan. Show some love. Because when you're battling with depression, when you're struggling with issues, it's difficult. Life is difficult, no doubt about it. Find somebody else and share their pain with your pain. Eliminate their pain. Make their pain easier for them. And guess what? What a beautiful religion we have. What a great Lord we have. When we give happiness to others, Allah gives happiness to us free of charge. Subhanallah. And then the final verse, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ The first meaning, don't speak negative, speak positive. Thank Allah for the good. If you try to count Allah's blessings, you're not going to be able to count them. Don't count the negatives, count the positives. The second meaning, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثِ نِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ here is a reference to the Quran and to Islam. Because the biggest blessing is the Quran. And the biggest blessing is Islam. In other words, the last three verses, it instructs all of us to do two things. Number one, become proactive in benefiting other people. And number two, and be role models of Islam. 